Do you dream of starting your own business and working for yourself? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be going over a step-by-step, -step, easy to follow guide on how to do just that. So make sure you're subscribed and let's get started. The very first step in starting a small business is deciding what type of business you want to have. What are you passionate about? What would you enjoy doing if it was just a hobby? This is really key in your long-term success because you want to be passionate about what you are creating. There are two different types of businesses and that is online and in-person or a physical store, for example. I have two different businesses personally. One is my clothing brand Live More and my media business which includes YouTube, both of which are online. But that being said, even if you choose an online business, it doesn't mean you can't have an in-person event. I actually just did a pop-up store for Live More this past weekend and it was a very profitable weekend for my brand. Online businesses are great because there's less overhead costs when starting and all you need is a laptop and an internet connection. Speaking of internet, I've actually partnered with a shop business on today's video because they've been supporting small businesses through technology technology and ongoing community initiatives. If you plan on starting a business or a maybe already have one, Shaw is offering three months free on business internet gig or gig 1.5 when you sign up on a three year or five year term. This is obviously a great deal. So if you guys are in need of a new internet plan, make sure to check out the deal by clicking the link in the description. The next step in starting a small business is deciding what you are going to sell. What problem are you solving with your product? This is a key in finding success. You must be solving a problem or making people's lives easier. You you want people to buy from you, so what are you providing that people are going to pay money for? This is the type of groundwork you need to do before starting your business that will make you successful in the long run. I'm going to talk a little bit about my two businesses to give you guys examples for what exactly I mean. So let's start out with Live More. The reason I started Live More was because when I was traveling, I would always run out of things to wear. I had one reversible swimsuit way back in the day, and when I first went on my eight month backpacking trip, I always went to that swimsuit because I just found it so incredibly handy to have a two in one, especially when you're on long trips, you can only fit so much in your suitcase. And so I was confused why there wasn't more reversible swimsuits on the market. But aside from reversible swimsuits, there was no reversible clothing that was trendy and actually looked good. Most of the reversible clothing was camping gear or stuff that didn't necessarily look the best. So I wanted to create something that was trendy, fashionable, and very convenient. So that's essentially the difference that Live More makes. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of of clothing brands and swim brands, but what makes us unique is the versatility of the product. So I really try and get that across in marketing and finding something that makes you unique will help make you successful. Now on the other side of things with my media business, originally it was Read More Media where I would do freelance videos for brands, which I found a really big need for because a lot of people, to be honest, don't necessarily know how to do video for their own social media. So the option is to hire a really expensive video company or hire someone maybe bring on an intern who doesn't exactly know what they're doing, but there's no one in the middle who offers affordable costs and a great video. So I really tried to bridge the gap with that. And I actually recently started a digital marketing company called Cultivate Digital with my friend Megan. And with that business, we do have similar services to most marketing agencies, but what makes us unique is that we offer video content creation services along with running ads for these companies. So essentially by having the same company for you, create the content for you, make really bomb ads, and also run those ads it bridges the gap and the disconnect that a lot of brands have come to us and said that they've struggled with. So we're essentially taking a problem and solving it and that is something you will need to do with your business. And if you're trying to figure this out for yourself, take a piece of paper, jot down a bunch of notes on the common problem people have and how you will solve it with your product. And there you have what you are solving with your product. All right, so let's say now you have your product, you know what you're gonna solve. The next step, say for example, if it's a physical product, is how the heck do you actually bring this to the finished product stage. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is find a manufacturer. Now, when I started Live More, it was about a two year process to figuring this all out, testing different things, seeing what works. The truth of the matter is if you are going to manufacture locally, it is going to be more expensive. So your profit margins aren't gonna be as good. Whereas if you manufacture overseas, you are going to see a greater profit margin. However, with that, it does come with a bit less control because they are so far away. It's not like you can necessarily go to the factory. If you have the funds to do so, I definitely suggest you go and visit your factory. When I started my business, I unfortunately didn't have the chance to go and visit my factory in China just with current travel restrictions, but that is definitely something I want to do. And building up a personal relationship with your manufacturers is really important. There's two main ways you can find manufacturers. The first is to attend a trade show. Magic in Las Vegas is actually where I got connected to my manufacturer who makes my 
clothes. The second is Alibaba, which is a fantastic resource and is where I actually found my swimsuit manufacturer. My biggest tip when finding manufacturers is to have patience. Now you might get lucky on your first few manufacturers, the samples come back great, but a lot of times and what I personally experienced is it does take a few different manufacturers to go through and figure out what you actually want. Now I feel like I've done every single type of process you can do. I've tried getting tech packs made locally, sending them over. A lot of the manufacturers too will have designers in house where you can just send photos of your product and then they make it up. That way usually takes a bit longer. What I do suggest if you have a physical product is get a prototype or a pattern, if it's clothes for example, or sample made locally and then send that to the manufacturer to recreate. So if you are looking for manufacturing in China, they are really great at replicating things. So even if there's a, we'll say a dress for example, a bodice of a dress that fits really nicely, getting a pattern locally made from that, trying that on, you could even get them to sew the sample for you and then send that to a manufacturer in China. Now, yes, this might be a little more costly, but you have to invest in the sample process if you want a good sample. And I would definitely give yourself anywhere from six months to a year to perfect your product. I've definitely in the past gotten in the trap of trying to rush products to market and that doesn't really work. So say for example, if you're trying to launch a swimsuit brand, you definitely want to launch it in the spring or summer, very start of summer. So make sure you're giving yourself a year. So say this coming spring, you're like, all right, by next year, I wanna have it launched. You want to start the sample process as soon as possible because it might take some time. And then the second thing I can suggest with Alibaba if you're doing clothes or any sort of product, for example, is the photos that you'll find on Alibaba aren't necessarily going to be accurate of what they're creating. So you want to give them your WhatsApp number, get them to send you physical photos of their products, maybe some videos as well, doing a stretch test or anything that your product might need to show that it's durable. You're obviously gonna be able to, once you actually get the product, really tell. But you know how I had mentioned that you want to send them the physical product? Because you don't wanna necessarily get 10 of the samples made and send them to all the manufacturers, you need to find a way to vet these manufacturers first. So a good way to do that is to get them to send you photos on WhatsApp. Another way is you can actually order just maybe like a random sample of, say if you're doing a dress, get them to send you a dress design that they have. You can check the sewing, check the quality, and then that moves them on to stage two. If you like their sewing quality and their communication has been good, then from there you can send them the physical product that you got made, just so you're not wasting too much money. You really want to try and make this process as efficient as possible, but have patience and you will learn so much with each sample. All right, so fast forward, your products are now in the manufacturing process. The next step is to build out where you're going to sell it. So since we're talking about the online world, there's a few different platforms that you can use to sell from Shopify, Wix, there's various other ones. I personally use Shopify and I find it really efficient and great. So I started building that website, I would say about a few months before I launched. And the reason you want to do that is because you just want to give yourself enough time to make sure everything's good. And anytime you can give yourself more time to do something, the better, because you just have to accept with business, it's like a roller coaster. Things are going to go wrong things are going to maybe not go as planned and as long as you're flexible and you have enough time to solve those problems you're gonna be somewhat keeping your stress at bay <laughs> I don't want to say stress-free because owning a business is not necessarily stress-free but it's a wild ride and it's a lot of fun the next step once you have your website set up is you want to create all of your social media channels from Instagram Facebook Pinterest which is actually a hidden gem I highly suggest for any product especially clothing or anything like that and then TikTok as well that people have seen great success on you just have to be consistent our live more TikTok actually has started to gain quite a little following so we had a video go viral which was a bikini hacks which I will put right here and it was quite a simple video but educational content on TikTok does really well and that video is over 5 million views and it's actually grown us over 13,000 followers so TikTok is its own own separate thing I could talk for days about. So if you guys want a separate video on that, leave a comment down below and I'll teach you how to run a TikTok for business. And then of course you have your email marketing. I use Klaviyo and you want to create an email funnel for that as well. So when someone first purchases, if they abandon the cart and all those other things, that could also be a separate video, but that is a great way to make sales. Some companies just use email marketing once they build out their list and you can have a lot of success and sales, especially when launching. Now, before your website even starts, you also want to make a landing page because essentially you want to start collecting emails that you can then send out your email marketing to. Getting hype for your launch is gonna be really important in getting sales those first days when you launch. So even if you aren't that active on social media, going onto your Facebook and inviting all of your friends to like your Facebook page, any way that you can do that 
consistently posting on Instagram. There's a ton of stuff you can do before your website even goes live to ensure a really successful launch. The next step I would suggest is to create community. So obviously you're gonna to wanna to create a community with the people following your clothing brand, but aside from that, you also wanna create a community for yourself as a business owner. So joining different business groups, maybe on Facebook or in-person events, is a really great way to start building your network. It's really great to grow with other business owners and connecting with like-minded individuals will help you make your business even more successful. And then aside from that, also to building up influencer relationships. So influencer marketing is a really great way to grow your brand. Obviously when you're starting out, you might not have a ton of products to gift, but finding influencers within the niche of your product category and start building up relationships with them is going to help grow your product if they just post organically or in the future if you have a budget for paid collabs. If you build up that personal relationship, they're more likely to want to work with you and be excited about your product. And the final step is to adjust and make better. With business, it's always a work in progress and things can always be improved. So even the first photos that you get for your website, your product photos, maybe three months down the line, you find a really awesome photographer and you can go and update all those photos. So constantly improving and finding ways to make your business a better and better is how you're going to succeed in the long run. Building up a business takes time. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to have a sold out launch right away to get to a million dollars in sales. For me, that's always something that I feel like isn't talked about enough in the business world. We always hear about people's successes and how well they're doing in business, but we don't as much hear about people's business failures and maybe a product flop that hasn't gone that well. And I think being transparent about that takes the pressure off of business owners. I think natural entrepreneurs often have high expectations for themselves. I know even with myself, I definitely put a lot of pressure on myself to succeed, which sometimes it's so much pressure that I just get overwhelmed. And so taking a step back and just being appreciative that you've launched a business in the first place, which that in itself is a success and taking your small wins and just being happy for yourself is going to make the whole journey so much more enjoyable. So I encourage you guys obviously to work hard, but also have fun with it because having a business is a wild ride. It's so much fun. And it's also so cool building something that you have created in your mind and bring it to life and seeing other people actually use those products, enjoy it. I know the first time I ever saw someone tag a live more bikini, it was just the most exciting thing. This is a product I had thought up in my head and seeing someone actually out on the beach enjoying it is extremely rewarding. Now that you know all the steps to take when starting a business, I want you guys to comment below what type of business you are thinking of starting and you can connect with other entrepreneurs in the comments and start your communities. And of course, don't forget to take advantage of the three months free on Business Internet Gig or Gig 1.5 that Shaw Business is providing to get your business started today. Make sure you guys leave any questions you have in the comment section below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Does